Hey, this is Dot Too Fast here, and in this video, I will be building a brand new computer. Now, this one will replace the one I'm currently using, which is uh, several years old and it's a bit slow. So, these uh, parts that I got here is from a store called Micro Center. I'm not sure if you have one in the place you live, but they're a really good store. Uh, good customer service. People are knowledgeable. And once a year, they do the sale for all the do-it-yourselfers, where if you build your own computer. All the components are on sale. Uh, the processor, motherboard, memory, cases. I mean, there's a whole array of different parts you can get. And a lot of the, those items are on sale. Now, uh, by the time you watch this video, most likely the sale might be over. Uh, but you can always wait until next year. Or you can just buy it at retail price if you want. And, you know, build your own computer. So let me go over some of the stuff I bought. The big box you see in front of you is a Thermaltake V3 Black Edition uh, computer case. It does not have a power supply so it's just the case itself and that's the case I chose because it was also on sale. I think with rebate it's about $22, $23. Now in these bags I picked up this MSI Z87 G41 motherboard. Now this was a combo deal that came with the processor that I bought. The processor I picked up is an Intel Core i7 uh, 4770K. The socket on this is LGA 1150. And that will work with this motherboard. Also picked up a Western Digital 2 terabyte hard drive. For the power supply, I'm using this Neutron 550 watt and no particular reason except that you know it was on sale and 550 watt is plenty for this computer I'm not doing any you know major gaming or anything I'll be doing some video editing so that's enough power got a OEM LG DVD burner this was like 15 bucks and also ballistics 8 gig uh, DDR3 memory picked up a couple of uh, SATA cables here to hook up the uh, disk drive and the hard drive these are all the parts that I'll be using to build my computer you know, this one all together parts alone I think it's about $500 for all the parts not including the operating system I will be installing a Windows uh, 8.1 professional on this computer and that will be additional cost is about $130 for the 8.1 professional version anyways before I start the build I'll quickly show you my other computer that I'll be replacing this is the computer that I've had for the last seven eight years I think and it's also a computer that I built at that time and uh, it has a core 2 dual processor inside and it served me well over these years. Uh, back then, you know, this was a pretty fast computer. But if you compare it to the i7, obviously the i7 is going to be a lot faster. Let's first open up the computer case. And instead of pulling this case out, which makes the job very, very difficult, you should flip this upside down. Now in this case, you'll find two Phillips back on this side here. Go ahead and remove those. And there's a little handle here. Let's pull this back. Inside the computer case, you'll find a bundle of wires here. And it will have the uh, power button wire and the reset button wire also have the LED for the power and also the hard drive LED audio wiring the back here this case comes with a fan already that's what this connector is for here's the power supply 
AC cord. It comes with some screws to mount the power supply into the case. Also comes with uh, some tie wraps. Very nice. Now in this case, before I can put the power supply, notice there is a, a corner brace that I need to remove. Otherwise, it can't slide the power supply in, into the slot. So I'll go ahead and uh, remove that little bracket here. Put this back in after the power supply is mounted. Power supply. So I turn the case so that the front is actually facing upwards and then from the bottom you can actually remove the front panel. Also on the front panel there are two clips on the side. You can just bend it a little bit carefully pull these out. For the five and a quarter bay I'm actually going to remove this third one also because at the end when it's all said and done I'm going to actually have two uh, DVD drives one on top in the first slot and then one in the third slot. Just be careful that you don't cut yourself. Slide the DVD drive into the five and a quarter inch slot. Make sure it's flush with the front face. Now this case comes with these quick lock mechanism. So you just stick that on, turn it clockwise, and then the drive is locked in place. At this point you need to get an anti-static strap like the one I have here. And at the end of this it hooks up to your ground, the ground in the house, and that will prevent any static electricity that might damage components. So I'm going to now install the hard drive. This is the uh, Western Digital 2 terabyte. So that's locked in now. So I moved the computer case over to the side. And the next thing I'm going to work on is the motherboard. And make sure you have your anti-static strap on so you don't damage any of the components. Carefully place this on the USD bag. We'll go ahead and release the latch on the processor socket. We'll lift off this black cover that protects the pins on that. Here's the Intel Core i7 processor. Go ahead and open this up. So inside the box you'll find the processor itself. It's on the side. And then this big unit here is the heatsink fan that goes onto the processor. So the processor comes with an installation instruction manual. And if you open up to the installation guide, it'll tell you how to install the processor and also how to install the fan. On the motherboard, you'll notice that there are actually two little notches over here. So the processor itself is keyed so that it can only go in one way. So do not force this in any other direction. You should be able to just drop this in gently and that's it. I'll go ahead and close this. back on and that's it. So here's the CPU fan. If you look at the bottom this gray stuff is actually the thermal compound 
and that will go between the heat sink on the processor and this heat sink here. So what you want to do is you'll notice there are four holes and it even has a shape of the heat sink. So just drop this carefully on top. So once it's on there, these top screws, just turn this counterclockwise 90 degrees. And that will lock in the CPU fan. So this wire you see that's attached to the CPU fan, that's the power wire. Go ahead and route this over. And on the motherboard, there is a designation for CPU fan 1 and 2. So we'll go ahead and plug this into CPU fan 1. Now we'll go ahead and install the memory. This is the uh, Ballistics 8 gig kit. And this motherboard has four DIMM slots for the memory. And you should refer to the manual because it'll tell you if you want to run it in dual channel mode, which slot you need to put the memory. So in my case, I'm going to be using DIMM slot 2 and DIMM slot 4. So go ahead and release the latches. They're on the sides. And again, these are keyed so that you can only put it in one way. Don't force it. So this is DIMM slot number 2. And what you want to do is, once you have it seated in there, then push this on the top and the side latches will lock it in place. And here's DIMM slot 4. In the motherboard manual, also refer to the mounting screw holes instruction. So it tells you exactly where the six screws need to be mounted for this motherboard. Now before you put the motherboard in, there's also a back plate that you need to install into the chassis. Do not forget this. And this plate comes with the motherboard when you buy it. So this plate will go on the back of the chassis here and it snaps in place. snug. So now we'll go ahead and slide this in carefully. And when you insert the motherboard make sure that there are these ground tabs on the back plate here. Make sure you don't pinch it. So it's stuck in the wrong place. So keep an eye on that when you're installing this. Just carefully slide it in. You also notice that all the screw holes should line up, including the one with the standoff we put in here. So now we can install the screws to secure the motherboard. There are two power connectors that need to be plugged in to the motherboard and this is a big one and the smaller one is an 8 pin connector so make sure that you plug in both of them now this fan that came with the computer case has a power cord here and you want to plug this into the system fan number one. Now I've rotated the computer case around so you can see the header on here where we'll plug in uh, from the case you have the hard drive LED, the unmarked power LED, power switch, recess switch.
I noticed the uh, power LED from the computer case has a three pin connector and you see the middle pin is not used but the header on the motherboard is only two pin so what I need to do is move this over so now it's going to be a two pin connector because the last pin on the right side you see there is not going to be used and I like to clean it up a little bit so that you don't have wires everywhere so I'll put on a couple of tie wraps from the computer case there's also this USB connector that goes to the front of the computer case to give you the expanded USB connection and this one you can just go ahead and come to the motherboard here USB 1 the last one from the computer case is going to be your headphone and mic jack so this one here will connect to the audio connector the motherboard came with two SATA cables so we'll connect one of the cable to the DVD and the other end we'll plug into the SATA connector on the motherboard So at this point, find out which wire you need to power the DVD drive and the hard drive, and the rest of them you don't need. Go ahead and clean it up a little bit so it's not really in the way. And it's all part of the cable management so that it looks cleaner. It allows for a better airflow also. Put this aside, get it out of the way. So at this point, the hardware is all assembled. All the parts that I needed in this computer are installed. So the next thing we're going to do is power this on, install the OS, and that should be it. So I plugged in the AC cable on the power supply, and switch on the power, plugged in the VGA to the monitor, and connected the mouse and keyboard to it. So I powered on the computer for the first time and it comes up to this screen here which is the MSI BIOS setting so here you see the settings is highlighted go into settings boot and then you see the order of priorities for the boot so boot off the hard disk first followed by the DVD followed by USB hard disk so that should be good okay I inserted my Windows 8.1 professional disk in there and on a BIOS, I'm going to do save and exit. Hit reboot. So this hard drive is a 2 terabyte hard drive and I'm going to partition this. I'm going to put the operating system on to say about 200 gig for the operating system. I'll go ahead and uh, format this. and then click on next 
and it's installing the necessary files. It's now restarting. So at this point, the Windows will do a couple updates, it'll reboot, and then the operating system is ready to be used. And you can install other uh, applications like Microsoft Office if you need. I hope uh, you enjoy watching this video. If you have any comments, uh, leave one below. And if you like my video, please subscribe. Thank you.